Hi everyone, this is Terry. This is lesson one in PE Design 11. In this lesson, I'll show you the basics. We'll go over the overall screen. We'll talk about the instruction manuals and we'll talk about how to start up the software. The first thing I want to mention to you is if you go into your start key and I'm using Windows 10, so yours option may look different than mine. You can see that the software is made up of several modules. That includes the, the, the Design Center, Design Database, Font Creator, PE Design 11 Layout and Editing, which is where you'll start up everything and do most of your work, the Programmable Stitch Creator, and your Stitch Design Factory. You can always come here to start up one of those applications, but there are other ways to do it as well. You will notice an icon on your desktop that you can double click that includes the layout and the editing, and that's how I start up my software. As you look on the screen, your screen may look different. It may include the wizard. Whenever you want to start up and with the wizard, you will want to select this so that it always starts up. We'll go in and look at the instruction manual. One nice thing about the software is it includes a full version of the instruction manual that's online. So as you're learning, you can go through this manual. You can also elect to print it out. Let's look at the introduction. In the introduction, it will talk about how to use your manuals. That includes the reference guide. This is packaged in with your software, and it also includes tutorials. I recommend that you go through that because what it will do is it will help you feel more accomplished with the software, and it will teach you how to move around on the screen. The instruction manual will also include a way to access the manual from a mobile device. You can scroll down, and you can see where you can get a PDF version of the manual, and you'll also see how to start the software if you happen to own a different version of Windows. If you go to the Support tab, you'll see where to go for technical support, where you can register your software, and you'll also see how to check for the latest version of the software. I'll show you that in a moment. You'll also see, read information about your software key. I recommend that you keep this key in a safe place. It's very important for you to use that key whenever you're using the software. Then put the cap on it, store it in a safe place when you're not using the software. So we'll get started in the beginning talking about how to start up the application. Let me X out of this window, we'll close all these tabs, and we're back in layout and editing. The first thing I want to mention to you is I showed you the modules. You can go to options in the upper right hand corner and you can always go in and start one of the other modules such as the design center. I'll choose cancel because right now we're learning how to work in layout and editing. So I'll exit out of that. You can also go to help and go to the online manual which is an abbreviated version. You can check for updates, which we'll do, and it's telling me that I already have the most recent version installed. If you select to put a check in this box, it will always look for the most recent version at startup and notify you. We'll go back to help. This is where you can go to customer support, your online registration, and this gives you some information about layout and editing and will tell you the version of the software that you're using. A lot of times when you contact customer support, that's one of the questions. Now let's talk about the overall screen and the windows. We'll start in the upper left. In the upper left, you have what I call the home key. This is the PE design layout and editing icon. I'll call it the flower icon. You can choose new to create a new design page open to open a previously saved design, but you can also use shortcut keys. So the control key, such as O, will open this as well. Your save, save as, 
print. You'll notice there are three menus for print. In some instances, you'll need to have a design on the screen. So we'll open up a design in a moment to show you that. You can set your design properties, design settings, fabric selector, choose your wizard. You'll see some things that are grayed out, and they're grayed out until you actually use the, the software and have something on the screen. You can go to options, and this is where you can set up the options for your machine. We'll cover this thoroughly in another video. You can also exit your software here, but you can also exit it up in the upper right hand corner. I suggest that you save, and I like to use save as simply so I don't overwrite a file. So let's also talk about the menu options up here at the top. You have tabs. So you'll see that you have icons across the top and areas. They're broken down to selection, clipboard, tools, import, edit, wizards, and so. And this is on the home tab. If you go to image, you have the image box, edit, and stitch wizard. In view, you have the view mode, the show hide mode, the grid, the ruler. In Scan and Cut, you have Select, Cutting Data, and Canvas Workspace. We'll cover each of these as we progress through the lessons. You have what is called the Quick Access Toolbar. So if you have something that you want to add to your Quick Access Toolbar, one of the things that you can do is you can right-click and add it to your quick access toolbar. And I've added that command right here at the end. We'll talk about that more later, but this way I don't have to go into the menu to get to that. I can click right here, and this is going to send my data to Canvas Workspace if I have something to send. You have panes that are located right here on the left-hand side is the sewing order. On the right hand side you have the color pane, the text attributes, and the sewing attributes. And you can select each of these individually. Many times people will end up moving this for, because you can take this and it's a floating pane and move it over and you can actually widen it as well. And if you want to dock it again, what often happens is someone will exit and close this box and they've removed it from the screen. I'm going to show you how to get that back. But first, let me show you how to dock it again. You can take it, move it back, and let's just right click on it and we can choose to have it docking. We can also hide it. You notice if you right click on it, you can choose hide and auto hide. When you choose Auto Hide, what happens is it, it becomes a tab that reveals itself as you select each one of these boxes. So you can see how it moves over and gives you more space. You can do the same thing with the sewing order by choosing Auto Hide, and it's now floating over here on this side. We'll leave it there for a moment. One of the things we want to do is to open a design and let's just go ahead and go to import. When you select import, you can import some of the, of the designs that are built in to your software. There are more than 500 designs in your design library. They're built into different categories. We'll go in and select one from birds. Now, whenever you select a design, you have the option of moving a design onto your design page in several ways. You can drag it over, you can double click, and you can also select it and choose import. So this way you have each of those designs on your design page. You'll notice they're very small and most often you're going to want to resize it. If something is selected, you'll see selection handles around it. These selection handles have black boxes that you can move. Now I want to mention to you what we'll do is we'll just select a couple. I'm taking the mouse and just dragging it around it. You'll notice I have a selection box. 
I can right click and perform options with it or I can select it again and choose the delete key to delete it. But if I wanted to select everything, I can go in the upper left and I can choose select all. That selects all of the, the designs and I can delete them by pressing the delete key. Let me just go ahead and reselect this cute little bird. Now one of the things about stitch files, you'll notice in the lower corner, this is what is called your status bar. There are several icons down here. We'll talk about them more in future videos. But one of the things that you have the ability to do is to change the size of this design. It's currently only 1,351 stitches, and it's 1.20 inches by 1.42. You'll notice that it's telling you to hold down the control key to maintain the density and fill. You want to do that because if you just drag the corner, and I'll do that, what I have is 1,351 stitches. That means that it's not going to be as dense as it was whenever it was designed, and it will not look as good. So what I want to do is to undo that, that action. I can choose the undo button right here, or if I learn the quick keys, what I can do is press Control Z. Now I have the design back at the original size. This time I'll hold the control key, and you'll notice I get something that looks like a zigzag key, or possibly it looks like the feed dogs on the sewing machine. We'll resize it. You'll notice now it's 7,000 stitches. Now one of the things that I want to mention to you is when you resize designs, you need to think about the characteristics. We have stitches that are satin stitches here. And you don't want to get those stitches so long that, that your machine cannot sew them or they're so long that they'll catch whenever you are using it or wearing it as a garment. We'll talk about that more in our future videos. So one of the other options that we had were these keys here. So you can move them and stretch the design in many ways. If I hold the control key down, I can stretch it from left to right. Anytime I don't like something, all I have to do is undo, and you have several undos. So that takes us back to our original size by choosing undo multiple times. I'll make it larger again, and I'll just move it to the center. I'm holding my left mouse key, and you'll notice that I have an arrow point that arrow point or white arrow shows me that I'm moving it. I can rotate this design by selecting the red dot and I can move it around and rotate it around the screen and get it in any position that I want. Well, I think we've learned quite a bit for lesson one, but I do want to show you one other thing. We'll use the fly out on the sewing order. This is the sewing order of the design. So it's made up of several colors of thread. And you can see in this design, we have five colors of thread. We'll talk more about this tab, but what I want to do is right click and I'll deselect auto hide so it stays in place over here. You can, sometimes what happens is you have closed this and you can't find it. It's one of the things that happens most often with new users. In order to locate it, go back to View, choose Sewing Order, and now it's back here on the screen. You can select to pin it or unpin it by selecting the Pin button here. You notice when it's unpinned, it floats back in the dock. We'll pin it back in place because I like to look at it. Let's click off of this and let me talk about one other thing. This is a stitch file. When you have a stitch file, you'll notice this little dotted box around the, the design. You'll see with the components that when I select a component, I get something like what I call red ants around it. These are marching around those portion, that portion of a design. If I go to try to select this, it's selecting everything. Let me choose it and choose this select here 
and see if I can just select that portion. If you can't, it means this design is grouped. There are ways to ungroup it, and you notice now that I have the Stitch tab open. So anytime I'm selecting something that is related to stitches, the Stitch tab becomes activated so that I can go into that particular tab and make the changes that I need to make. We'll talk about that again in another lesson. I hope this information has been helpful to you. As always, it's my pleasure to help you learn your software. Thanks and have a great day.